All right, we have more PlayStation 5 Pro leaks to go over. As we discussed on Friday for LTPS, we had the initial leaks come from the YouTube channel Moore's Law is Dead, where they published some very close-up screenshots of what was presumably the PlayStation dev portal. Uh, so we saw a little bit of the GPU side and uh, PlayStation spectral super resolution. Um, basically how that played out is it's something where like that showed up on the dev portal, but it showed up for like most third parties, like pretty much all accounts as far as I understand it now can see that info um, plus GDC is coming up anyway and so it's like it's something where like it, it was very close to like all studios were going to be in the know about this um, and so by that time it was something where Moore's Law is dead published the info then uh, Insider Gaming then The Verge I had even seen the material at this point it was something where the second this update went out for studios um, it was mere hours and then the leak showed up online so like it's all basically genuine uh, and now we have more info and more details on the rest of the ps5 pro spec sheet courtesy of insider gaming so they're publishing this online and so we'll go over what we know so far so on the cpu side of things uh, as we know the current ps5 is an amd zen 2 cpu capped at 3.5 gigahertz we always say capped because it is a variable frequency but um, as a reminder from way back in the day we knew that ps5 was running in a a sort of reverse boost clock so it's always running at the top end and it will only dip under taxing situations uh, but ps5 pro is still a zen 2 cpu with eight cores uh, but now running at 3.85 gigahertz so it's a very slight increase but principally it's the same cpu uh, and also uh, the article writes here in high cpu frequency mode more power is allocated to the cpu and will downclock the gpu by around 1.5 percent resulting in roughly one percent lower gpu performance so it does seem like there's a little bit of extra space there for games that are maybe more CPU bound, but uh, that's what we're hearing there. And then the GPU is all principally what we've uh, heard before. Rendering is 45% faster, uh, two to three times ray tracing performance, four times in some cases, which we now have some context on that. Uh, it will be BVH8 traversal shaders. Uh, that's going to be on board for the hardware. So it's using AMD's uh, RDNA4 ray tracing hardware, their next gen suite there. Instead of um, right now, it's the RDNA2 BVH4 in the existing PS5. So that explains the, um, you know, the pretty sizable jump there for RT hardware uh, on PlayStation 5 Pro. As we've said before, 33.5 T-flops, never always a good indicator of like direct uh, power and like performance, but that is the number that uh, we know of. Also PSSR again, so that's PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution. That was kind of the dead giveaway the second I saw this news. I'm like, that sounds like something Sony is probably doing. Uh, so again, we've got more validation that is what they're doing. So this is Sony's in-house AI machine learning custom architecture that's going to be on the board. Um, also Insider Gaming Rights, 30 work group processors. Uh, so that would be 60 CUs total for versus the standard PS5's 18, but um, Tom Wright's 18, that would account to 36 CUs, but there's four disabled on the board, so technically 40. So in the case of PS5 Pro, it would be uh, 28 work group processors because two would be disabled, so 56 CUs total. Uh, anyway, memory, current PS5 is 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 at 448 gigabytes of bandwidth. Uh, PS5 Pro is just gonna have the same amount, but run at a, a faster rate there, so it's 16 gigabytes of GDDR, uh, GDDR6 again, excuse me, uh, but presumably it's at 18 uh, gigabits per second for a memory bandwidth of 576 gigabytes per second. Uh, on the audio side of things, the ACV runs at a higher clock speed, resulting in the ACM library having 35% more performance, uh, more convolution reverb can be processed, more FFT or IFFT can be processed. Uh, can be processed. I won't even pretend to act like I know more about the audio side of things. I really don't, but I would assume all these things can just be processed a lot faster. Um, but here Here's also some uh, pretty important news. So it's also understood that as a means to make the PlayStation 5 Pro as competitive as possible, uh, and that's not their phrasing there. So I guess they're pulling that directly from the material, um, or at least what Tom's uh, heard from some sort of source. But uh, it will have a detachable disk drive, which will be identical to the latest iteration of the standard PS5 and one terabyte of storage. Uh, just for um, context there, I would also presume that means that it's just going to use the actual manufactured drive that Sony is sending out to stores and also packaging with the existing model. Uh, PS5 Pro, in terms of the chassis, the console design, it's probably going to be bigger and bulkier and look different. Um, it won't look like a PlayStation 5 Slim, although I'm sure it will still have the same design principles as in um, white panels, maybe a glossy black uh, centerpiece or something like that. But um, anyway, the, S uh, the SDK is on version 9.0 right now and 10.0 is expected for fall of this year. So 
Uh, that's basically what we know so far about PS5 Pro. And a lot of that is probably not going to change because uh, especially, uh, I guess, knowing that the SDK version is not is not going to update for quite a while, this is probably what most studios uh, are going to be working on right up until PS5 Pro has a formal reveal, which is expected to be still expected sometime in September. This is something where, like, even though we've got the leaks now, it's simply a byproduct of third parties have it. So there's very little control Sony now has with the info, right? Um, first parties are... are uh, uh, first parties are always going to get this stuff first, then second parties, they're a little bit more trusted, and then third parties, and that's why we have this stuff now. But now that game studios have it, uh, it will be something where by the time we have a formal reveal, first parties will probably be the sort of best way to present all that information. Depends on how Sony's going to really uh, market the thing. But I I mean, it would be a very safe guess to say that we're probably going to see uh, Ratchet and Clank or Spider-Man be like the software that they use to show off PSSR and... Um, all the improvements on the ray tracing side. I'm sure those will be the, the benchmark and maybe some third parties will show up too. They'll, they'll find partners for this thing, obviously, for the initial reveal, but that's still going to be in September. They're not going to announce it early and sort of undercut or undermine the existing hardware that's out there right now, even though this will still be, as I tend to remind people, low volume. There's been the ongoing question of, do we need this hardware? And I've always been of the mind at the start of the cycle that like, really, we could go the entire cycle and we really don't need it, even though we are getting to that point where there's a handful of games that are now starting to not be problems, but it's a matter of like if we want to see some advancements on the visual side or in terms of game scope, like certain things are going to have to give, right? Um, the most notable examples recently would be like Starfield on Series X where the game is only 30 frames per second because of the, the, the game's scope and the world and having all these objects that are that are interactive and they stay in the game state and everything. Uh, something like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth as a recent release has always been a, a pretty fascinating like case study on that, right? Because it, it, at least in the enthusiast space, people are often of the mind where it's like, I don't care what it takes. I want high frame rates. Give me 60. I don't care. Drop down the frame or drop down down the resolution, lower, I mean, decrease vegetation, do whatever you have to do. I want 60. But this is the first game where I'm seeing a number of people and it's anecdotal, sure, but like, it's like, oh, but maybe not, <laughs> maybe not that blurry. Like this performance mode's looking a little rough, right? So, I mean, that's a one notable example. Uh, Alan Wake 2 shipped with only a 30 FPS mode before 60 finally showed up. Um, Dragon's Dogma 2 coming out very soon, which is an unlocked 30. And that's all that game is at right now for when it comes out, which that it's going to be a very big, ambitious world. And it's like, if we want those kind of games, you know, certain concessions are going to have to be made. And that oftentimes, historically, for the last 20, 30 something years, it's always been frame rate. Frame rate usually goes first. So with that said, I mean, if you're in the enthusiast space, then PlayStation 5 Pro, maybe you're not even asking the question, like, do we need this thing? You're probably more on the fence of like, oh, I, I absolutely will buy this thing day one. Um, but uh, so what I'm just curious about definitely is uh, the pricing and also how they're going to how they'll approach marketing. I presume marketing will be something where it's going to primarily lean into the RT performance and uh, PSSR, Sony's new in-house AI machine learning uh, for more efficient 4K image qualities without, you know, really taking a hit on the performance side of things, which is going to be beneficial to frame rate, obviously. But um, those two things alone, it, it'll be, it's interesting because that goes into the visual side of things, which people tend to not want in the enthusiast space. It is appealing, obviously, but if you care about frame rate, ironically, that's something where I feel like existing software right now that either doesn't get a PS5 Pro patch or enhancement, which it, you know, a lot of games will, like a lot of the things that we're playing right now, uh, a lot of active games that are still seeing content updates. I mean, they'll probably get PS5 Pro patches if it's a well-known like AAA studio or something. But, uh, you know, a lot of those games, if they don't get patched, that would probably be the more ideal circumstance because then you can just play them and PS5 Pro will probably still, you know, boost the performance of those games. So if it is like an unstable 60 or an unstable uh, high frame rate mode in the 80s, 90s, it's going to push it to 60, push it to 120, um, and that'll be ideal for them being unpatched. Uh, otherwise, you get a PS5 Pro setting that will maybe kind of just put us in the same circumstance of like, oh, an unstable 60 frames per second, but it now it would be in the case of Dragon's Dogma 2 or maybe Grand Theft Auto 6, which we have no idea how big and ambitious that game is going to be, but we all expect that's probably going to be the case. Even though GTA 6, uh, as many like to remind others that Rockstar has never shipped a uh, 60 FPS game on console day one, Maybe that would change with PS5 Pro, obviously, but you know, there, there's that whole angle of it. Um, 
But pricing is interesting because, uh, it, as the company admitted, even in the most recent financial report, uh, financial report, they are really having a problem getting the price down on the existing PlayStation 5. I mean, historically, we've seen that die shrinks are a great way for the hardware manufacturer to uh, lower the price and therefore pass those savings on to the consumer. But even now, that's just not really a reality that the company is uh, facing because the it's still technically the MSRP is 500. Right now, they are running a sale where it's uh, you can get a disc console for four. 49 um and that might be the, the little wiggle room they have because i think it's a very safe guess to say that we're probably going to see ps5 pro ship at 600 dollars usd although i am a little bit nervous here that it's not so much 600 but is it 600 and does it include the disk drive because that is also kind of a you know of course they would do this in terms of uh supporting the detachable drive that they're manufacturing in mass like that's that would be better for their bottom line to just continue using those drives, not have some sort of separate uh, product line that has to manufacture a slightly different disk drive for what is going to be a low volume console. So they're going to be using this detachable drive, which also means it has the caveat of how you have to register online at least once to use the drive, which is not ideal either. But um, I just want to know that does it come with that drive <laughs> or are they going to sell it for 600 and it doesn't include that? Now you could add one, but then that's going to be another, you know, 80 something dollars, which is not exactly an ideal thing to, to have, especially for a very, you know, high end box for very engaged customers that might also be buying physical software, but <laughs> that's kind of where I sit on that. The other thing I'm seeing a lot of already after these leaks came out is uh, the CPU. Complaints about the CPU. There is basically no upgrade here, a very minimal 10%, I guess we could say. Why is these? Why is the CPU basically the same? Which a lot of that probably falls down to how Sony handles backwards compatibility. The way they do it is, you know, they, they it, it needs to run at a similar clock speed or the same or a little bit over. Uh, they do that for PlayStation 4, PS4 Pro, that's how that console worked back in the day, or those two machines rather, uh, and it's how PS5 plays uh, PS4 games in backwards compatibility mode. So that would be something where for PS5 Pro now playing PS5 games, PS4 Pro, and PS4 titles um, with those three different you know settings in the back end, you don't see those things obviously, but um, that is probably something where it's more for backwards compatibility, but also probably looking into the future for PlayStation 6. Uh, that's that's how Sony approaches it and. It, that's something where I'm maybe a little bit nervous as to where PlayStation 6 goes for how many consoles that's going to go back and support. In theory, the idea always was that now that we're on x86 hardware and you know this is sort of the new foundation for PlayStation hardware that can be very adaptable and that means backwards compatibility should be ensured. Um, but the way that Sony approaches it, it's a little bit more complex and so that's something where based on how they're approaching it, I mean, it's not a massive concern. I don't work at the company. I don't know what their plans are, but that is probably how they're approaching it right so and this thing i mean that's how ps4 pro was doing it anyway it was, it was the same cpu right so to expect a big cpu jump uh for ps5 pro was not expected or really i would argue necessary considering we could have not had ps5 pro this entire generation then by 2028 you've got playstation 6 that will still have uh still have all these things that we're hearing right now and then some um but you know the other thing about this is that the Microsoft side of things, the rumor there is that they're not even doing a mid-cycle update, which if we don't have rumors, then they're definitely not doing it. The rumor is, well, suggesting that they're just going to start the next cycle, you know, sooner, like in 2026, whereas Sony is expected to start the next cycle, well, their next cycle in 2028, which would be a pretty big two-year gap, uh, although they could ship in 2027. But now we're getting into a whole different can of worms. Anyway, that is uh, what we know about PlayStation 5 Pro so far. I don't expect we'll hear much more unless we get like specific game studio leaks or something or like actual footage come out or whatever. Because again, this is the current version of the SDK. Um, if a new one is not expected until fall, I mean, that's kind of where we're at until I think Sony is really ready to talk about this thing. But um, a lot of unknowns, but that is still something where I think we kind of have a good idea of where the price is going to fall and how Sony Sony is probably going to try and market and uh, sell this thing to people that might be interested in a very high, very high powered PlayStation 5 for engaged customers. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoy the conversation and I'll see you all in my next video. You take it easy.